Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to focus today on children's books and some of the special things that both can be done with children's books, but also throwing some focus and attention and light onto a segment of our population that doesn't, I think, get very much notice as a general rule, at least in the audiobook world. And that is uh, visually impaired and blind children. Now, whether a child has visual impairments or uh, some reason why they're not able to read a book versus listening to an audiobook version of a story, there are other considerations that you may want to just think about when you're deciding whether or not you want to bring your children's story into the audiobook world. One of those is uh, bedtime. Bedtime is a time when we are often reading stories to our children, and I certainly always encourage that. But there comes a point when you want to turn out the light and you might want to have a story help the child go to sleep. Audiobooks create a way in which uh, you can have the lights out and still be telling a story. Some of the other moments when audiobooks are particularly helpful are in the car or traveling when uh, it's not a good time to be either looking down because you may feel carsick or uh, just to have some kind of entertainment that is appropriate for kids in moments like that. And then, of course, as we're, uh, if we recognize that many children these days are facing different kinds of challenges, or maybe I should say that parents are facing different kinds of challenges regarding screen time, how much screen time do we let our kids have, and making sure that we're not letting them have more than what is healthy for their age. This is another way in which children's audiobooks can really serve, can provide some entertainment, some, but also some really good learning time with um, the telling of stories, the sharing of content in an audiobook context. Additionally, let's think about the fact that the trends in the world, really just the globalization of our societies, really brings up the opportunity for children's books in multiple languages to be all the more valuable, all the more important in these times. The same story told in multiple languages can both, it can accomplish assisting a child in learning a second language or providing a kind of immersion experience for a child, at least uh, not full immersion, obviously, in the larger context of the use of that word, but by immersing them into a story where they're hearing it in a different language, again, if you're trying to help a child learn a new language. And I want to take a moment to focus on this particular question for a moment, this issue of translation of a children's book into multiple languages. One of the cool things about this opportunity is that while translation is a kind of a high art and something that to be able to, to really properly translate a story effectively and to communicate the style and tone of the author in more than one language, it is therefore an expensive cost as a general rule. So, but translating a full-length novel is a much more expensive process, obviously, than translating a children's book, which is going to be much shorter. For this reason, translating kids' books into other languages becomes much more affordable. Also, with audiobooks, since you're not having to deal with illustrations and layout in more than one language, 
that is also going to help mitigate some of the expense of having your children's book in multiple languages. We recently had an interview with Darren Spears of Authors Republic, and I was asking him about this global trend and the expansion of the audiobook market into other countries and therefore other languages. It was really clear in that discussion that getting your book translated and recorded as an audiobook in multiple languages is a really good idea. If you already have your children's book illustrated, there are some additional things, uh, opportunities that are opened up to you that I wanted to bring up as possibilities for you. Uh, One is to actually create a video using the illustrations from your book as slides and then having the audio from your audiobook narrating your video. Coming back to that, one of the first things that we talked about in this episode is about uh, children who are visually impaired or blind. While they would still not be able or may have trouble seeing the visual part of that, Uh, It is a way to help some who are just visually impaired would have another modality that maybe would work better for them on a a visual perception scale. Just to acknowledge that if you were to do that, you would be essentially making your video available, your content available for free, that you would want to factor that into your overall marketing for your book your audiobook, and to consider whether that is something that is a good fit for you or not. Another option, and something that I think we've discussed in a previous episode, but only uh, just touched on, and that is enhanced ebooks. Enhanced ebooks are basically these kind of read along ebooks, very similar to a print book, but in a, in a digital format where you turn the page with a swipe and you typically, and you see the image and often there is highlighting where the words are highlighted as the child or as the audio proceeds so that it's kind of a read along process. This can be especially helpful for children who may not regularly have somebody that either feels comfortable reading to them or is capable of reading to them for whatever reasons. I will say, however, that as a general market trend, the enhanced ebooks of this kind have not really taken off the way many people thought that they would. And if you were looking at it as a, a way to earn a lot of money from your children's audiobook or ebook, this is probably not going to be one of your best options because. The additional cost of creating it, generally, it's hard to make up that cost on the sales side of things. But for some people, it's just exactly the right thing that they're looking for. And so it's good to be aware that that is an option. Something else to consider, and this is particularly for books that you would like to make more accessible to children who are visually impaired or blind, and that is illustration description. This is particularly valuable when you have illustrations that are adding content that is not in the text itself and that you feel like really add to the story but is not in the text. So what we're talking about here is essentially writing up a description of the picture and then having that narrated. This in itself is a bit of an art because you're really trying to select the elements of the picture, the aspects of the picture that are adding value to the story. For example, you might have a picture of a red apple sitting on a table. Is the color of the apple important in the context of the story? Or is it how it's sitting on the table? Is it right at the edge of the table where maybe some mouse is going to climb up the leg of the table and 
and it wiggles so much that it tips over because it's right on the edge. So you want to consider what is it about the illustration that is adding that extra story component and have it described accordingly. If we were to pair that idea with the video idea, and if you are using your, if you're creating a video using the slide illustrations from your book and the audio description and the text of the audiobook, and then you add in those descriptions. So then you really have a resource that is more accessible for kids who are blind or visually impaired. Another thing to think about and do some research on is do some searching on uh, platforms, organizations that are looking for resources for this population. Find out what they need. What are they looking for? How might you be able to serve as an author of a children's book? So those are my tidbits of thoughts for today. I hope that I have been of some help in thinking about your children's book and ways in which you might get your story out into the world to more kids who are in need, more kids who are looking for great stories to listen to, and to the parents of those kids who are looking for these kinds of resources. I hope this has generated some new ideas for you in the world of children's audiobooks. If you would like to talk about your audiobook, please reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com. I'd be happy to talk with you. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.